Hello, I'm John. Welcome back to the series where I play and review every crypto and NFT game from the perspective of a normal gamer who doesn't care about crypto. Today, we'll be looking at one of the most requested games for this series, Big Time. Big Time is a free-to-play multiplayer action RPG game that combines fast action combat and adventure through time and space. The game is currently in a pre-alpha state and can be played by either purchasing an access pass or by getting an invite from someone else who plays the game. The paid access passes come with additional cosmetic items as prices begin at 315 US dollars. However, they did recently implement an additional way to get into the game, which is by purchasing a space NFT. I'm not exactly sure what space NFTs do in game, but I know that they cost $60 at the lowest. Visiting the game's homepage, bigtime.gg, we can learn a little more about the game. Big Time aims to be a multiplayer adventure with the following bullet points. Action-packed gameplay, free-to-play, never pay-to-win, and a player-owned economy. Explore ancient mysteries and futuristic civilizations as you battle your way through history. Pick up rare digital collectibles and tokens as you fight and defeat enemies. Collect in-game items and tokens, produce digital collectibles, or hang out with your friends. Limitless environments and adventure instances give you infinite replayability. The gameplay options are endless. Endless, you say? There's not much more on the homepage, but I did notice at the bottom here, the news section. Scrolling through this, you'll notice that some of their news includes the sales of loot boxes. Each loot box usually costs between $30 or $60, but there are some that are being sold for thousands of dollars. Before we've even downloaded big time, we're already seeing two things that gamers generally dislike. Overpriced microtransactions and loot boxes. Now, to their credit, the only items that you can purchase in big time are cosmetic items. However, these prices are still outrageous. Keys for crates in CSGO and TF2 only cost $2.50, and you can freely buy and sell those items on the Steam Marketplace too. Already, I'm pretty disappointed with how much stuff they're selling for a game that's still in pre-alpha. I mean, at least there's a playable game, but I really don't think that this is a fair business model for the players. The developers of Big Time are offloading a majority of their financial risk of their game failing by having the players fund a significant portion of the development process. This is not super common in traditional gaming unless you're looking at something like Star Citizen or Chronicles of Illyria. But in crypto gaming, this is the norm. These studios will fundraise an insane amount of money for games that so far have only ever flopped. Although, I don't think there's a single crypto game that's ever actually released. They're all in a perpetual beta or alpha state. This allows them to dismiss any criticism by saying, we're still early, or it's not finished yet, it'll get better. Regardless, I'll talk more about the game's economy later. It's about time for me to play a fun crypto game, so let's play. Getting signed up and downloading the game is simple. Just visit openloot.com and log in via single sign-on. After logging in with the email address that I had received my access pass on, I can then download the game and get started. It's a smooth experience. Immediately after launching the game, we're met with a disclaimer. You are playing an early access build of big time. The game is a work in progress and you should expect to encounter unfinished, unpolished, or downright broken content along the way. I'll keep that in mind. I think now is the appropriate time to address criticism that I'm already expecting to receive. John, why are you reviewing all these games in alpha? They're not finished. Well, I've got a two-part answer to that. One, if the game is fun, then the pre-alpha will be fun too. Minecraft, Kerbal Space Program, and Factorio all launched to the public in a pre-alpha early access state, and they were all fun right away. Plus, those games were all made by very small indie teams, not big multi-million dollar AAA teams like Big Time. If Big Time is a fun game, then the pre-alpha should be fun too, and the bugs should be easy to overlook. If they're as experienced developers as they say they are, then they should know how to make fun gameplay, and that should be their priority. Plus, the game's been in development since at least early 2021, or at least that's when they started selling NFTs for the game. Two years is more than enough time for a AAA team to get a full game developed, let alone a pre-alpha. And my second point is they're charging hundreds and even thousands of dollars for items in this game, and it has a functioning marketplace. It's estimated that they've collected at least $50 million in venture capital funding plus NFT sales, so I think I'm allowed to share my opinion. Welcome to Big Time. You are a time-traveling hero who's been summoned to the end of the universe, where you'll be taught by some of the greatest minds in history. Your task? Defending time itself. And then we have a diagram of every hotkey in the game. I hope I don't have to remember this. Next, we're told to choose our starting class. Big Time features a unique fluid class system where you can change your class at any time. That's really interesting, and it's definitely not the most common system in RPG-type games. 
while there's plenty of other games that are like RuneScape where you have no class and instead just freely level all skills, in big time there are still limits to what each class can do. You can just change them whenever you want. I guess it's sort of like Warframe? I don't know, I haven't played too much of that game. Anyway, I picked the Chronomancer because somebody told me that they were the most overpowered. And boom, here we are, big time! Stepping forward, I speak to a welcome bot, which gives me some tutorials regarding different movement abilities. WASD to move, spacebar to jump. Simple. You can also dodge by double tapping one of the WASD keys. This feels a little strange, and it's pretty unresponsive. I don't like this at all. This tutorial continues by showing me how to open my inventory, equip items, upgrade skills, and so on. Pretty standard MMORPG type gameplay here, I can't complain. Heading through the tutorial world, something else about the game started to bother me. Whenever you're just walking, pressing A or D will cause your player to strafe left or right. Makes sense. But when sprinting, A or D makes you instead turn left or right. It feels really strange. It's like keyboard turning in World of Warcraft if you've ever played that before. It's a strange design choice. After spending a few seconds attacking the training dummy, I get a feel for the game's combat system. Left clicking casts a light attack and right clicking uses your heavy attack. You have to aim these attacks by using the crosshair in the center of the screen, and you can also cast abilities by pressing the associated number key on your ability bar. Again, quite simple. My current quest is not to fight these dummies though, I need to be looking for Erwin Schrodinger, apparently. Following the quest marker takes me to a cat named Waffles. Speaking to him gives me a few different options for dialogue. Hello dear sir, I am a cadet from Evermore. Mr. Schrodinger, I presume? It is indeed an honor to meet you, sir. Inspect the cat's collar, or leave. I chose the second option, and he responds with, Eh, meow? I inspect his collar. Whoever is reading this, you must pet the cat, for both our sakes. Erwin. Okay, I'll pet the cat, and wow, a portal appears. I guess I'm supposed to go in here. Inside this portal, I encounter the great Erwin Schrodinger. He kinda looks like Caillou wearing a tricorn hat. I guess in big time, Schrodinger was a balls guy from the 1700s. Anyway, he speaks with an exaggerated German accent represented by I dialect. Gut gut, you're here. I've been vading forever. You must be the new chronomancer, that is, to be mine apprentice. For your first task, you must break me out of here. Ahem, apologies. This shield is generating a lot of heat and I have been sweating here for many hours. Please look for its power source and find a way to disable it. Well, at least there's no egregious spelling or grammar mistakes, but I don't really like this writing style. The overuse of I dialect and the corny writing make this read like bad fanfiction. Destroying the box behind Mr. Schrodinger frees him, and after some more goofy dialogue, he tells me to go kill some enemies. I proceed through the rest of the dungeon, easily dispatching every bug that I encounter. It's all pretty fine, nothing amazing. If anything, it's frustrating just how spread out everything is. Most of my time here was spent traversing the long distances between enemies. Also, none of these enemies were even able to attack me since they're all melee and I could just kill them before they get anywhere near me. Along the way, an axe dropped, but unfortunately, since I'm the Chronomancer, I have no use for this. But I can store the item for later in case I want to switch to a class that can use the axe. After defeating all of the enemies, I'm able to head to a marked area to challenge the boss and its minions. With epic didgeridoo music blaring in the background, it's time for an epic battle. The boss doesn't even attack me until I get close to him. Combat is nothing more than standing still and spamming the left mouse button as fast as you can, occasionally pressing one or two. This is some of the most engaging combat I've ever seen in a video game. Truly next level. For some reason, enemies have a chance to evade your attacks, which doesn't even make any sense, as your projectile very clearly collided with them, there's just a random chance that they'll evade, and it feels so frustrating every time it happens. After defeating the boss, the ragdoll glitches out and flies 100 feet in the air. I received a ton of loot after doing this, but unfortunately, a lot of it was for classes other than the one that I was playing as. After 30 seconds of waiting around, I'm teleported back to Waffles, the cat. Speaking to him treats me to some more cringy dialogue, ending with the cat opening a portal to town. Alright, into the portal. 
Talking to our old friend, the 18th century Schrodinger, he gives us a quest to talk to another NPC and then tells me to go into another portal to investigate an anomaly. Sure, whatever you say, boss. Heading into this portal, I'm teleported to a very different landscape than the cave that I was in before. However, all enemies are the same. It's still just bugs. Again, it's no challenge at all to defeat them, just standing still and spamming left click until they're dead. Just like the previous dungeon, the distance between objectives is ridiculous. You kill three enemies and then run straight for two minutes and then kill another enemy. These maps are way too big, considering how little of this space is actually utilized. After three minutes of running, I reach the boss arena, where I'm tasked with defeating another beetle boss. I tried to fight him head on, dodging backwards to avoid his attacks. However, the dodge feature is so clunky that I couldn't reliably use it. That's because there's no animation canceling in big time. If you attack, you're committing to that attack. Dodging is therefore pretty much useless. You're pretty much always better off just turning around and then sprinting in the opposite direction. Especially since you have to double tap to dodge, it doesn't really feel natural. Let's try something even better though. I tried to jump on top of a rock where the boss can't reach me, and to no one's surprise, this worked perfectly. I was just able to stand on this rock and attack him at range while he stood still, doing nothing at all. Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. You can't. I know I've only played big time for about a half hour at this point, but so far, I'm nothing but disappointed. The combat system is clunky, and just spamming left click is extremely boring. I haven't even talked about the graphics at all yet, but they're not very good. I'm playing on the highest graphics settings, and for some reason, the first thing that this game reminds me of is LEGO Universe. Anyone ever play that game? Big Time even has a pretty similar combat system to what LEGO Universe had. Big Time is supposed to be the true AAA gaming experience. Maybe by that they meant that you'll be calling AAA to tow the game out of the ditch that it's in, because nothing about this experience feels AAA in the slightest. Did I already mention that this is after two years of development? and $50 million in funding? The studio behind the game, Big Time Studios, was founded by a former employee of Decentraland. Big Time Studios boasts that they have employees that have worked at a number of other large game studios, which, while nice, ultimately means nothing. Yeah, we have staff who worked at Blizzard. What was their role? Well, he was the janitor. Two years and millions of dollars later, and this is all you have to show? And they're releasing new cosmetic NFTs and microtransactions all the time. Am I thinking crazy here, or is this just sad? Everything about this game just screams cash grab. Anyway, back to the game. After completing this dungeon, my next quest is to run across the world and complete four more dungeons. Oh boy. There's gonna be a whole lot of walking ahead. This is still the tutorial, by the way. In the next dungeon, I'm in a desert sort of biome. Finally, we see our first enemy that isn't a bug. It's a goblin named Underling. Oh, okay. Okay, I've completely desynced from the server. Let's go. Oh, whoa. All right. All right. Whoa, look at that. Oh, God, how would you ever dodge that? They throw axes at me, which can be dodged by strafing to the right. Good to see some variety, at least. After taking a bit of damage, I need to rest to heal. This is how you restore health in big time, by using the rest ability and then waiting while your health very slowly regenerates. This allows you the perfect time to rethink the choices in life that led you to playing big time at 11pm on a Sunday. My objective in this dungeon is to collect 4 flowers. The real challenge of big time is trying not to fall asleep at your desk while playing the game. Spam left click to kill an enemy, run 18 miles to the next objective, and then repeat. Since I don't actually have to kill any enemies to complete this objective, I just decided to run directly to the flowers and collect them, skipping any combat along the way. I am having so much fun. This is still the tutorial by the way. If I wasn't playing the game for a review, I would have quit already. It's been almost two hours and I've not done anything but run around and left click. The boss of this dungeon is encountered in this absolutely massive arena that looks identical to the one from the previous dungeon, except with a desert skin. The giant robot boss is no challenge though, and he dies in like 4 hits. This dungeon took me about 11 minutes to complete, and I skipped almost every single enemy. That means I spent around 8 minutes doing nothing but running from point A to B. Truly the future of gaming. I guess I should talk about the game's talent tree system, since I've leveled up a few times by now. Each class has a talent tree, and you gain skill points every time you level up. You can spend those points on different abilities. Sounds pretty standard. But what I don't understand is this requirement to visit a trainer to unlock certain skills. 
I searched everywhere around the map to find the trainer, and I couldn't find them anywhere. And I completed the entire tutorial, and at no point did they show me where the trainer is. There also isn't a world map or anything, you just have to wander around finding things for yourself. Not only does it make no sense to require you to visit a trainer to learn skills, but it makes even less sense that you have to go look for them yourself. Just let me spend my skill points however I please. Big Time loves to make you waste time by having you walk extremely long distances to do anything. Now, I eventually did search online for a map of the game and was able to find the trainer. From my understanding, there are five different levels of trainers, with each one only being able to teach you a certain amount of skills. The first three trainers spawn in different places in the overworld, and the level four and five trainers have a random chance of appearing in certain dungeons. Regardless, I don't like it. Just let us spend skill points wherever we are and get new skills. Because I couldn't find the trainer, I just ended up putting every single skill point into the fireball ability and continue to the next of the four dungeons. The Frost Cave, again. This is the exact same map as the very first one I played on, with the exact same boss fight. Except this time, my objective is to disarm some bombs. Whatever. Not interesting. Run a mile, left click a thousand times, run another mile, and then repeat. There may be different objectives, sometimes it's picking flowers, sometimes it's opening a portal, and sometimes it's disarming a bomb. But no matter how you label these objectives, they're all ultimately the exact same thing. Run to point A, kill a number of enemies, run to point B, fight the boss, and repeat. While the enemies are getting more difficult by having more health and a higher chance to evade my attacks, that doesn't really add any depth to the game's combat. The heavy attack is terrible, it's never worth using that. It does five damage. It just makes everything a bullet sponge. This is lazy game design. The enemy AI is terrible anyway, and sometimes just running far away from it will cause it to break completely and just stand still. Not to mention that you could always just lure all of the enemies over to a rock and then stand on that rock. Then they can't even hit you at all. This is probably the optimal way to play big time. The main gameplay loop in big time is to group up with friends and complete these dungeons to get epic loot. The loot that drops in the dungeons can either be stat increasing items or extremely rare cosmetic NFT items. The stat increasing items are all just in-game items though, you can't sell them, only the NFTs. And just like every other play to earn game, the main motivation behind playing big time is to get NFTs and try and sell them. This seems to be a problem though, because the drop chance of these NFTs is extremely low. I asked someone in chat how long they had to play before getting an NFT, and they said they spent a dozen hours grinding the exact same dungeon to get just one cosmetic item. There are also plenty examples in the game's discord of longtime players complaining constantly about how rare the NFTs are. It could take anywhere between 50 to 100 hours of playing between NFT drops. I've mentioned this issue in previous videos, but to reiterate, the developers of a game with a real money economy must make sure that all of the tradable items have extremely low drop chances. Otherwise, the items would only sell for a few cents, and they need to keep those prices high so it looks attractive to new players. Wow, I can get an item that sells for $50? Sure, but you'll need to buy a new mouse after 600 hours of left clicking to do combat in this game. The return on investment as far as time spent playing is horrible. Players have found that it seems to be most effective to constantly create new accounts as you appear to have a higher drop chance when you first start playing the game. A sort of beginner's luck feature. Now, I can't confirm if this is actually true, but if it is, that's pretty funny. And it leads us to another very important point, exploiting the game. A game with a real money economy is ripe for exploitation. As they say, exploit early and exploit often. Why would you want to play the game legitimately when you could just find a way to stand on a rock and become immune to damage? What about hacking? Amazon's MMO, New World, was completely overrun by exploits and bugs at launch. Players were duplicating items and currency and becoming immune to damage, among dozens of other bugs. And that game was a full-priced game without a real money marketplace. The only incentive to exploit there was to save time. Now imagine a free-to-play game where you can actually make real money. That's a recipe for disaster. While playing big time, I tried many times to get into a party with other players. However, it was very difficult to even find another player. That's because almost everyone plays on the Frankfurt server. I switched over to this server, and the game began to lag heavily. I tried for a while to find other players to play with me, but I had no luck. There's no looking for group or party finder feature, you must ask in chat to find people and then manually invite them to your party. But if you think about this, why would anyone ever want to waste their time playing with a low level player? Everyone is incentivized to play this game because of the chance that you might find a rare NFT to sell and to make money. 
So people would only ever want to group with other high-level players so they can clear the dungeons as fast as possible. It creates a terrible environment for any player that just wants to play the game to have fun, and those players will inevitably just quit. Eventually, the player base will consist solely of players trying to exploit and play the game in the most optimal way to maximize their chances of getting an NFT. There will be no other way to play the game. Actually, it already seems that way. Big Time currently has no form of anti-cheat system. Players have made reports of others speed hacking to run around the map at high speeds, as well as being able to attack at a much faster speed. This is because your attack speed appears to be client authoritative. After reading these reports of speed hackers, I went to go try it myself, and I confirmed that it is very true. If you're able to alter the speed that your game's client runs at, then you're able to attack at the speed of light and traverse the map at a much more reasonable pace. When the developers were asked about this, their response was, we are aware of hacks and please report anyone using them and we'll ban them. With these speed hacks, it makes it trivial to just run through and clear a dungeon in only a few seconds. So how many of these items on the store were obtained via exploits or other methods? There's really no way to tell. But since all of these items are on the blockchain, doesn't that just mean that you can still sell the items even if you used an exploit to get them? How can the developer ban you? Well, it's quite simple. Big Time's items are not on the blockchain. As explained on their website, Big Time is built on the Ethereum blockchain. However, we use our proprietary Vault technology to circumvent the lackluster user experience and high costs of Ethereum. There's also a link to a patent owned by Big Time for said Vault technology. I skimmed through this patent, but it's just a bunch of crypto buzzwords and other nonsense. Basically, all of the NFT items in Big Time are just stored on their centralized database, exactly like any other in-game item in any other normal video game. According to their own FAQ, users are not allowed to buy or sell non-NFT items, products, or services. The only items supported for trading are NFTs, and only on the intended platforms, which is the Big Time Marketplace or Open Loop platform. Users involved with real money transactions for in-game items may be suspended or permanently banned. Wait, so you can't even trade your items freely? It all has to go through big time? How is this the decentralized future that Web3 promises? A player asked in the Discord, how can I withdraw my NFTs because my account has been banned due to sanctions? Answer, you can't withdraw NFTs. I really doubt that anything about big time is actually on the blockchain at this point, but hey, feel free to prove me wrong. While I'm on this subject, I might as well talk about the withdrawal method. If you sell any in-game items on the marketplace and want to withdraw your earnings, you must first make sure you have completed Know Your Customer requirements. That means that you need to send appropriate government identification and a picture of yourself to Big Time. Also, the only way to deposit or withdraw money into your Big Time account is via cryptocurrency. They accept USDC, Ethereum, Bitcoin, or MANA, which is Decentraland's cryptocurrency. That's odd. They're trying to make the game easier to access for gamers who don't use crypto, but then the only way to cash in or out of the system is by using crypto? It seems counterintuitive. But as usual, this means that you'll still need to pay those hefty gas fees depending on which blockchain you're trying to cash out on. But didn't they say that the whole reason behind not using NFTs as in-game items was to avoid gas fees? Oh, maybe that was so that Big Time doesn't have to pay the gas fees. You still have to pay them. In this tutorial on their website, they show an example where someone has to pay $7 in gas fees to cash out $25 worth of USDC. That's nearly 30% in fees. And that's not even including the fees that you need to pay to actually turn that USDC into something you can use in the real world. As usual, crypto just makes everything worse and more complicated for pretty much no benefit. Since you still need to go through big time to sell your NFTs, they could always just say, nah, we don't feel like it, and then ban you. It seems like the only reason that they're using blockchain, which I'm not even so sure that they're actually using it, they just use the word blockchain, is because it attracts big money investors. Let's see who some of their biggest investors are. Let's see, is there even anything else worth talking about for big time? Well, after completing this tutorial, my next quest was to continue completing more dungeons. Like I said, the main loop of big time involves traveling around a way too big and empty open world looking for portals. These portals can be activated to send you to a dungeon. Then you complete the dungeon and get loot. Repeat this endlessly. That's the endless fun that they mentioned earlier. In the game's only main town, you can buy and sell items, and I think that there's a crafting system as well. However, the tutorial didn't teach me how to do crafting of any sort, so I really don't know. One thing that I noticed that really pissed me off was that there's no buyback feature at the vendor. 
If you sell an item by accident, you'll have to buy it back for a ridiculously inflated price. There's also a player-owned housing feature, but almost everything here is locked behind owning the game's NFTs, so it wouldn't really matter to a free-to-play player. And that's kind of it. I played the game for over four hours, and I just barely completed the tutorial. There's no reason that you'd want to play this game over something else, like Warframe. Sure, you can get NFT items, but you're only able to sell them for cryptocurrency. Expect to spend at least 10 hours playing to earn the equivalent of 3 hours working a minimum wage job. And once you've earned that first NFT, it sounds like you'll need to play another 100 hours before a second one drops. Yikes. It seems like the people who play these play-to-earn games are unable to comprehend the possibility of just playing a game for fun. Everything you do does not have to have a financial incentive. It's okay to spend $60 that you'll never get back on a game that brings you 50 hours of fun. Play-to-earn inevitably just becomes work-to-earn. And as far as working goes, you'd probably make more money walking down the side of the highway picking up cans than playing big time. This game is a big time mess of boring gameplay, bad graphics, and strange gameplay decisions. With how much money has been poured into the game, you'd think they have at least, you know, a friends list. But no, the game is so bare bones. Because it's a crypto game, they've had to spend millions of dollars and thousands of hours on creating an economy and then coming up with more ways to charge people money. That means that they can't put all of their efforts on creating engaging gameplay. I know, I know, it's still the free alpha but we're talking about a game that's been in the works for at least two years now. Considering that this is what they're calling a AAA experience, the fact that this is all that they've managed to put together in two years is sad. They've got a long, a long way to go, and who knows if they'll ever get there. The player base doesn't really seem to be that happy with the game, and the only reason that people seem to be playing it is to try and farm NFTs. They're fed up with the fact that they've spent thousands of dollars on the game and have hardly received any NFTs in return. Are they only playing this game to make money, or are they trying to have fun? Players are also upset because Big Time has sold them many NFTs with a promised utility that has yet to be implemented, years later. And worst of all, well, the players don't even own the NFTs since you can't withdraw them to the blockchain. They're nothing more than overpriced microtransactions that you can sell only on the official Big Time marketplace. The Big Time subreddit has only 2,000 members and their official YouTube account only has 13,000 subscribers. Their most recent videos have been averaging about less than 5,000 views. Here, you want to learn how the big time economy works? Our glasses are limited supply artifacts that, once equipped, would allow the player to start generating time tokens while playing the game. Time is a cryptocurrency that acts as the glue of our economy. Since our glasses are limited in supply, only a fixed number of players can equip them at any given moment. On the other hand, time tokens can be spent by any player, meaning the potential sinks for time in the economy are limited only by the number of players in our game. The dynamic that emerges from these two systems is that even if the player base grows, the supply of time tokens is capped and won't ever change. Now, to bring it all together, our value chain would look something like this. Time wardens would craft hourglasses. Hourglasses are acquired by our hourglass owners who would equip them and start generating time tokens. Time tokens are acquired by our armory and forge owners who need them to craft cosmetic NFTs. Cosmetic NFTs then would be listed on our marketplace for all our non-utility NFT owners to buy. In a nutshell, that's how our game economy would work. My head hurts. I think it's about time that we brush off the old John score and see where big time sits. Point number one, ease of access. Getting an early access pass is easy, but you can't just sign up and download. You need to find someone to get you a code. There are a ton of Discord servers that you can join though, and they give out access every Thursday. It's not that hard to find a code if you try. Also, you could just buy an NFT to get access, but that's probably a waste of money. Four out of five. Point number two, graphics and audio. Honestly, I think that Big Time has pretty terrible graphics. Also, the game doesn't even run very well considering how simple the graphics are. It's a resource hog at all times and the game freezes and slows heavily when in a crowded area, not to mention that it crashes all the time. The environments are all super bland and have nothing exciting about them. The game's supposed to be about fighting through time and features historical figures like Schrodinger and Ben Franklin. Actually, I think those are the only two historical figures in the game. However, the actual game world is just a generic fantasy setting. A desert, a forest, an icy cave, whatever, this has nothing to do with time. The enemies also just seem completely random. There's bugs, goblins, and space pirates. There's no cohesive theme, it's like they just reached into a hat and pulled out different enemies. The dungeon maps just plain suck. Each dungeon is technically randomly generated because the maps are made up of a bunch of different tiles that are randomly selected and then mixed and matched. But none of this really matters since there's nothing interesting to see. If anything, the random environments are annoying since it just means that you'll get lost when spending an hour running around trying to search for the enemy that you're supposed to kill. 
There is no character customization, nor are there any female characters. You'll even see the same NPC model repeated four times over standing right next to each other for the class trainers. The animations for your character are fine, but the flashing light visual effects range from extremely boring to seizure-inducing. The jumping animation looks really stupid though. As usual for crypto games, the audio seems to be an afterthought. There's not really any voice acting, but some of the cyber pirate enemies say something, but I couldn't understand what they were trying to say. Rocks everywhere. The game's main theme song is actually pretty good though, and I will commend them on their dynamic music system. Music fades in and out when entering and leaving combat, and it gets more intense during boss fights. But other than that, your attacks make very little noise, and they don't exactly have a lot of oomph behind them. Oh, and the dialogue writing is very cringy and feels like it was written by a 15 year old. I gave Big Time's graphics a 1 out of 2.5, and the audio I also gave a 1 out of 2.5, for a total of 2 out of 5 in the graphics and audio department. Point number 3, the gameplay. Big Time? More like sleepy time. Combat in big time is a total snooze fest. You just spam left click and occasionally press a number key. You must always stand still when attacking and there is no animation canceling. This makes dodging enemy attacks feel very clunky. It makes big time feel prehistoric when you compare it to a modern action RPG. Even World of Warcraft has more movement based combat than big time. The enemy AI is terrible and easily exploited. Not only can you break the AI by standing on a rock, you can kind of just get far away from them and they'll stop chasing you. It's embarrassing. The class swapping mechanic is unique, but it doesn't really add any depth to the game since you still need to collect gear for each class. It just adds an additional time sink since you'll constantly be looting items that are designed for a class other than the one that you're playing as. The talent trees are kind of poorly explained and the fact that you have to visit a trainer to learn skills is annoying. It would be fine if the trainer was easy to find, but the high level trainers only appear at random in certain dungeons, so it's not even guaranteed that you can find a trainer every time. Even if the gameplay of Big Time felt amazing to play, the entire premise is kind of uninteresting. The core gameplay loop is to clear dungeons and hope that NFT items drop, and then trying to sell those NFT items to someone else. This has caused the entire player base to only be interested in farming for NFTs. But if you're too low level, then you're probably not going to be able to get invited to groups, so you won't really be able to progress very far. The game is entirely balanced around group play, and it ranges from difficult to impossible to complete even the low level dungeons by yourself without using an exploit. Add that to the already time consuming gameplay, and you're going to need to invest hundreds of hours into big time if you want to reach the highest level. Playing this game in its current state just feels like a big waste of time. Plus, since it's still in early access, they're frequently resetting everyone's progress after major patches. In general, I don't think that there's really much that they can do to make the game any better, unfortunately. The entire combat system needs to be reworked from the ground up. It doesn't feel like a modern action RPG in the slightest. The fact that enemies can evade attacks is also a poor design choice. I would understand if the game used a tab targeting system like World of Warcraft, but in big time, you have to aim your attacks. You should only be able to miss your attacks because you didn't aim correctly, not because RNGesus said so. When you look at other modern action RPGs, you see fast-paced games with hundreds of enemies and fluid, movement-heavy combat. Compare this to Big Time, where you're just standing still, casting spells at a group of maybe 12 enemies max. It's just not good enough. No gamer who isn't interested in crypto would pick this game over something like Warframe. Big Time has nothing new to offer besides the comically overpriced cosmetics. The developers of this game seem to value money over gameplay as they've invested tons of time in creating new cosmetic items, loot boxes, and NFTs to pre-sale. They've also done a ton of work to create an economy for the game. But this isn't what gamers care about. This isn't the fun part of a game. It's a waste of development resources. Big Time currently has no plans to announce a release date, but at this current pace, I would suspect that they're a minimum four years out from having a complete game. The game already looks and feels dated, it's going to be even worse come 2027. And that's assuming anyone even cares about cryptocurrency by then, and at the rate that things are going, that seems unlikely. Regardless, I gave Big Time a 2 out of 5 here because there's at least some gameplay, even though it's super boring. Point number 4, the use of blockchain technology. Well, Big Time doesn't actually seem to run on the blockchain, so that says a lot about how viable a blockchain is as a method of data storage. The NFT items don't really seem to be NFTs, even though that's what they call them. 
you can't actually export them to a crypto wallet at this time. But even if they do add that feature, exporting NFT items to the blockchain is under the complete discretion of big time. They still have the right to refuse you the creation of NFT items at any point. For example, if you used an exploit or if your account gets banned. This goes against the entire premise for using a blockchain, as it's supposed to be a decentralized system. Big Time seems to use blockchain because the team behind the game wanted to make a blockchain game. That's it. They knew that it would get them tons of money from speculative investors, and they were right, it did. But nothing about this game requires the blockchain, and I'd argue that it would actually be better in almost every way if they just removed the blockchain entirely. Not only does the blockchain create a barrier to entry for non-crypto gamers, it creates a ton of extra work for the developers. The only positive feature blockchain brings to big time is an excuse for them to charge more for less. Zero out of five. Point number five. Will this project succeed? I really don't think so. The game's received millions of dollars in funding and spent two years in development, yet it has received no mainstream attention. There are not very many players online, even at peak hours, and every server in the game is totally empty except one. The game's Discord server is full of complaints from long-term investors, saying that the company doesn't listen to player suggestions and that they keep lowering the NFT drop chances. Of course, the only reason any of these people play this game is to earn the NFTs. They'd never play it otherwise. I think that's pretty indicative that your base game is not very fun. Also, the game's Discord seems to be run by power-tripping moderators who heavily censor discussion and conveniently ignore difficult questions. But outside of the game's own Discord server, there's very little social media buzz behind Big Time. It was one of the earlier entrants to the world of Web3 gaming, with their NFT sales starting in 2021. But by now, new games have come out, and Big Time's been left in the dust before they've even launched their full game. Big Time's co-founder silently departed the company in late 2022. This is concerning, considering that he was the one who had over two decades of game development experience. The community constantly asked why he left, but the company quickly said that it's not important and it's actually disrespectful to even ask why he left. I highly disagree with that. You need to be upfront with why the co-founder left your project so abruptly. I think that Big Time will never even leave beta before being abandoned. There is just too much work to do and not enough money to be made on this sort of game. It's not like the team behind the game has a great track record anyway, considering that their CEO is ex Decentraland and you all know how Decentraland ended up. Considering the massive budget and so-called expertise behind Big Time, it's very disappointing that they've delivered pretty much nothing besides a bunch of microtransactions and a boring, buggy mess of a pre-alpha. In my opinion, it's almost guaranteed that Big Time is a Big Time failure. Sorry guys. One out of five. My total score for the Big Time Early Access is a 3.6 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, please suggest any future NFT games for me to play in the comments. Have you ever played Big Time? What are your thoughts? Would you ever want to play Big Time, even if they fixed the issues that I pointed out? As always, I'm John, and I'll see you next time when I continue my search for the worst NFT game ever. Goodbye.